Hi, Gary for RefTech. In this video, I'm going to discuss bending copper tube. The main reason for bending copper tube is to reduce the number of brazed joints, which in turn reduce the leak potential of your piping installation. Fewer joints equal fewer leaks, and no need to buy fittings for changes of direction. All of this saves time and money. As you may know, you can field bend 060 temper soft annealed or soft copper. You may also know that you should not field bend H58 drawn general purpose or hard copper. However, there is a rigid straight stick copper tube that can be field bent. Not only can it be bent, but it is approved for bending. This bendable stick tubing is H55 temper, light drawn, known as half hard copper. Get to know H55 tube. You're going to hear a lot about it now that it is listed in ASTM B280 as an acceptable for refrigeration piping. Let's go over the tools and materials we will be using in this video. The RefTech Digibender, H55 copper tubing, Android or iOS phone or tablet with the RefTech bending app installed, tape measure, fine point sharpie, a level or leveling stand. Bending copper tube and making it go where you want it to is a learned skill. It also requires a little bit of math for precision bends. The RefTech bending app for Android and iOS is very helpful for precisely bending tubing. Another training video will go into depth as to how to use the app, but in this bending demonstration, we will just be using the app's output. For this demonstration, we're going to make a four-point saddle bend with 45-degree bends using 7 8 OD half-hard copper. Start with the correct type of tube. Remember, both soft copper, O60, or half hard copper, H55, can be bent. Do not bend H58 hard copper. Ensure the tube is long enough to make all of the bends. The output from the RefTech bending app shows the minimum length required for the initial unbent tubing. The bending app output shows four reference points, labeled A, B, C, and D. These are the starting points for each bend. The distance column shows the distance to each mark from a single starting point. The input angle column shows the angle the bender's LCD display should be set to. You may notice the input angle is not the same as the desired angle. The input angle compensates for type of material and spring back allowing the bender to create bends close to the desired angle. The tube size and type of material are very important. The starting point will be the end of the tube and we'll mark that with a star. Using a black sharpie, we will mark 10 and 17 30 seconds and 44. The 44 is the set point on the bender. Then, 27 and 11 30 seconds and 44 and an R to remind me to rotate the tube. Then 51 and 7 30 seconds and 44 again. Then 68 and 1 30 second, 44 and R. Again, the R will allow me to know when to rotate the tube. We will then go back and mark all the way around the tube. It's just easier this way. The tube is now marked and ready for the bender. Set up a tripod or the bender tripod near a 120 volt outlet with space around you to handle the tube to be bent. We will next put the bender on the tripod and plug it into the 120 volt receptacle. The bender LCD will show flashing numbers indicating the bender needs to be returned to the zero position to start the bending process. 
After putting the direction lever in the R position for reverse, let's pull the trigger and let the bender return to the zero. The LCD should no longer be flashing and should read zero. Select the proper bending former and back former for the tube size along with the back former pin. Put the bending former on the bender shaft with the angle text and tube hook facing up and align it with the keyed shaft. Put the back former in place and secure it with the back former pin. We will be fiddling with this part a lot, so don't worry yet which hole to put it in. The bender should show zero degrees on the LCD. The starting end of the tube should be the end inserted into the tube hook. We will call this the back side of the bender. It's important for the starting end to always be on the back side of the bender. Using the scroll wheel, set the display to the angle input for bend 1 or mark A. In this case, 44 degrees. Bring the back former up to the tube and pin it to the bender frame using a hole that forms a snug fit between the tube and the bending former. Adjust the position of the tube so that mark A lines up with the zero mark on the bending former. Put the direction lever in the F or forward position, hold the tube steady, and pull the trigger. Hold the trigger until the bender stops automatically. Put the direction lever in the R or reverse position and pull the trigger until the bender stops. Now, pull the trigger again until the bender stops again at the zero position. The first time is to release the tube from the bender. The second time is to return to the zero position. Next, move the tubing so that mark B lines up with the zero position on the bending former. We are going to bend all of the angles the same, so we will leave the LCD setting at 44. Mark B has an R written on it. Remember, we put that on there so we, we would remember to rotate the tube. So now we rotate the tube. To keep the bend in the same plane, we need to rotate the tubing 180 degrees. This is where you need a level and three hands or as we're going to do, use a leveling table to maintain the same elevation. It removes the need for your third hand. There is a link below the video to the laptop stand that we used as a leveling stand for this video. Once we're convinced the tube is level or in the same plane as the first bend, we'll align the mark B with the zero mark on the bending former. Pull the trigger and hold until the bender stops. Again, return the bender to the zero position, going through the two stages of reverse. Same drill for mark C, but without rotating the tube. And again, same drill for mark D, but remember to rotate the tube. When done, we'll remove our finished bent tube from the bender. We now have a very nice looking four-point saddle bend that saved four 45-degree elbows, and eight brazed joints. And that's not counting nitrogen purge, brazing filler and cutting, deburring and cleaning the tube ends. All with the added perk of reduced leak potential. Thanks for watching and don't forget to watch our other videos.